Big opportunity for the Australians. There it is, the Matildas are through to the lockout phase. Australia's national women's team, the Matildas, have waltzed into the World Cup quarterfinals. A huge moment for Australian football. That's what, that's what we do. We're Australian and we fight to the bitter end. <laughs> the longest day at the office so far, <laughs> let me tell you. Once that whistle goes and you're out there and you're playing for your country, nothing else matters. For me, I don't know when my last game is going to be, so every time I take the field, I, I play it like it is my last game. World Cup is a footballer's dream. You don't get uh, World Cups every year, you don't get it every day. It's every four years and you're very fortunate to be there. You've got to be a top country to be even a contender. I was selected for the team in 2004. I was 16 years old. You just want to do what you what you can and do your thing on the ball. I guess from a striker's point of view, it's the goals, scoring a goal. There's no other satisfaction, yeah. Everyone's got that same passion for the game and the same kind of, I don't know, it's that soccer chick kind of way about life. I'm confident, I'm positive right now, and that's most important because when I feel like this, I feel like no one can stop me. Kwonkar has given Korea a two-goal victory here. The Matildas' Olympic dream is shattered. This loss is a major setback for Australia in the lead-up to their World Cup preparations. Be proud, girls. You've done a great job. <laughs> we prove a fucking point at the World Cup now, girls. We prove a fucking point, yeah? <laughs> Stick together. You never know when you're going to win or when you're going to lose games, OK? What we need to do now is get ourselves a physical preparation, a football preparation, ready now for the World Cup. Let's get going and let's get on to the next thing. Everyone's dreams had been shattered. Everyone was alone out there on the field with their own thoughts and their own feelings. So I just got everyone together and you know we've been through so much and we'll get through it and we'll we'll be looking towards the, the World Cup. At the moment I'm I'm training and doing different things, trying to um, make my game, you know, the best I can. And I know there's a lot I need to work on, so at the moment that's what I'm spending most of my time doing. Not everything sort of goes the way you plan. Obviously, when you lose matches and, oh, you just have bad days, um, but that's life, really. So um, you just got to expect that. And um, no matter like how you kind of deal with it is um, how you'll come out of it and how you'll learn from the mistake you made or how you'll learn from the game you lost or, or whatever, so. Let's go. Good one, good. I had to stop myself from, you know, really blowing up at people and saying, what would you know? You don't know anything about what I'm going through. And the only, re the only thing that really pulled me back was having a session with the male team that I play for in Victoria. And for the first time I was allowed to train with the seniors, with the men's, on the good pits and, you know, under the good lights. And it just made me feel special again. And that I've got bigger things to worry about, like the World Cup coming up, and it really pulled me out of the... The depths of depression, I think. She's such a, an assured goalkeeper. Um, she's a confident character. She's well respected within the team. She's kind of a, a, a kind of person that goes across all the groups and gets on well with everybody uh, and is trusted by everybody. Keep them in front, let's fucking punish them. Let's go, huh? Strong, get in amongst it. Is she 
yeah. get home till 9, 9.30 at night. So, I mean, I'm home at 5.30, 6.30, 7.30, so I can't sit around for two hours waiting for her to come home to cook. So, it's either that or I starve. So I just cook, it's easier. And if I'm working Saturday, I won't get a chance to go to the game because it's just, it's just too much for me. We just got so much stuff on. But you still made that decision to get married though, didn't you? Yeah. Well, you know, when it's love, you take <laughs> you take everything that comes with that. So, I mean, really, it's not that big a deal if she's not around. I mean, just make the most of the times when she is. Uh, it's not like she's out cheating on me. <laughs> if she's lucky. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm not out at nightclubs dancing with my friends, that's for sure. I At wish least. I was sometimes. I know she's out doing something that she loves, so. And I'm doing something that I love, like sleeping. So everybody wins. I think the family's on hold, but you know, that's cool. Because I mean, well, you're gonna have kids for the rest of your life, but she's not gonna have the opportunity to play soccer for the rest of her life, so. We've got two dogs anyway, so. They keep me company. I play with the men because it's. You know, it's international standard pace. I think I'm, I'm the first woman to play professionally in Australia. Basically, they've got testosterone, so they're better, they're quicker, and they're more powerful, so I'll, I'll get more shots in a game. I hate it. I hate watching her play. Because if she gets hurt, or if someone takes her out, you know, I get all defensive. I know I shouldn't, but, you know, it's just the way it is. And I've got to put up with people in the crowd going, oh, there's a woman playing. Get her in the kitchen. I'm like, yeah, get her in the kitchen. <laughs> Go, babe. <laughs> I mean, it, it is hard. You know, sometimes you've really got to bite your lip, but... This depends how many people you're up against, I suppose. But, I mean, she's always going to get that. And there's nothing wrong with her playing in the men's league. I don't know what they're so afraid of. We are under the radar compared to men's game. But I think that's the same in any sport. You know, we are amateur players, whereas some of the Socceroos are, are multi-millionaires. Um, so it's probably going to stay below the radar. What I think... Uh, we should be focused on, in, in a football sense, in a development sense, and, and through our federation, is that women's football is the growth sport, the growth women's sport in this country, by a huge margin. Nine, quick pass it girls, 10, 11, quick, 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 quick. If it's resourced properly, we can make enormous strides in the game and actually make it the number one participation game, really emphasise that in women's sport it is the only world game. you know under the eye and, and you know Tom and I have a few discussions how much notice he takes of me I'm not too sure but there's there's things that I definitely see out on the park and the things that I hear and bits of communication you know that that I can hear that he doesn't out on the field so it's obviously you know important that he does talk to me. Cheryl's probably the uh, the foundation that the team's built around you know she's just got such a, a presence about her and an intimidating presence, particularly to opposition players. Oh, first World Cup was 95, so this will be my fourth World Cup. It's, it's a good 15 years that I've been playing for. You know, and I've seen so many things change over that time. We've been through so many different coaches and players. Almost where you could lean over and touch them, sort of thing. You know, these young girls coming through, some of them are, you know, far more advanced than what I was at the same age, and. They do come to me and they ask me questions and they ask me about their game. But you still need to be close. Okay. It's a really big thing for me to be performing over the next couple of days, which certainly makes you nervous, but I think if you don't play with nerves, then you probably wouldn't perform as well as you could anyway. For now, I'm a 19-year-old, I still live at home, so I'm definitely, it's, it's not really the same situation most of the older girls are in. 
Sally is an essential part of a team. She has energy off the field, on the field, whether she's playing well or playing poorly, she always does things to impact the game. Well, Mum and Dad have been assertive with the whole school and sport thing, like just balancing it out. And ever since I was young, and for my brothers as well, like it's like school's your, one of your main priorities. Well, the, the only thing we've always been able to say to her is that you know, the problem with a, a sporting career, you're one good injury well, from the end of it. And that's probably been um, the reason to, for her to maintain some sort of balance in the rest of her life. Okay. I've really got used to travelling with a separate suitcase full of books, especially in 2005 when I was completing my HSC over in America, which was pretty cool. It was a very big, very big trip, that one. The best, probably, experience I had while completing my exams was on the um, plane flight from LA to Sydney. I was doing my maths exam in um, Tommy's business class seat, so that was pretty cool, <laughs> in style. This time last year, before the Asian Cup, there was a real edge to the team. Uh, that edge, and it sometimes happens, and the team has kind of gone off the boil ever so slightly. So I think the training's competitive. I think players are working very hard. Um, I think um, everybody there is, is holding their own. Uh, but it's, we just need to really get that edge back. We're probably lucky we're playing the youth team. It'd be four or five nil by now. That defended shit, by the way, at the back. If that's the tempo that we're going to play at, we're wasting our time. We're too busy trying to fiddle and fanny and fart ass about, hitting passes, that then it breaks down, it's, oh. <coughs> and suddenly, Bushka, the ball's down the other end. Everything's soccer, soccer. Football, football at the moment. And I mean, just even family time. I live at home and I hardly see my family. She's worked hard. She's up at, you know, five in the morning, she's got to go to the gym and then she's got to go to work and then she goes and work to the game. I hope so, or I might just take two bags that, that and box. chuck one out. Probably ten more minutes and then we'll carve it up. We're actually going. Keith's not a real traveller and he's getting himself psyched up and he's going to China. Yes, I've just said She's how really you nice, didn't really want to go, but mm. you're going. You're forcing yourself to go because Sarah wants you to go and you want to be there. Sarah said it, so I thought, oh, I'll what, go. What did Sarah say? I'd really like you there, Dad, so I said, oh, OK. Mm. So. so, it's a big thing for him. Where's potatoes? You know, it wakes me, the door out to the laundry. Clint was playing, he's seven, and then when it was t time that she could play of age, she wanted to play, and, you know, because she just stood out from day one. Hi, Sarah! Hi, Sarah! Hi, Sarah! Yay! I always knew I, what I wanted, and, um, I mean, I did have a few setbacks and there were times where I just thought, oh, no more. I did have a year off and then um, kind of that year off helped me decide that it's, it's what I really wanted. Um, I missed it a lot, so I come back to it. Sarah gets into goal scoring positions, creates chances, scores goals, and, and she will cause some major headaches, I think, for defences in this World Cup. So you're calling head socks, six Pe pairs? Pe Five. So if you said, said pet socks, I would have marked it off, yeah? Well, I think you'd use your brain yeah, and actually... Right. Psychologically, the first game's more, the most important. Um, just, you know, stamping your authority in the group. If you start with a loss, I don't know, it probably gives the other team a bit of confidence. But um, if you start with a win, you put fear through like, the hearts of the other teams. I think if we can win that first game against Ghana, they've been our downfall at the last two World Cups. You know, we've had a, a draw and a loss against them, and they're definitely a team that we can beat. We've always, I think, gone in with lower expectations of what, how they can play. So I think this time round, we'll definitely go in knowing that we've got to work so hard to beat them. 
You know, we've only won one game in a major tournament. That was the 2004 Olympics. I like to kick back in between. It's something that I've done even when I played professionally overseas. You know, you put everything into each training session and each game, and then the, the bits in between, you need your downtime. You need not to think about football, and you need to just go and have some fun and just be a kid, or, you know, even when you're 33, you can still go out and just be a kid and have fun. Together looking, and not just in good health, but looking sort of fairly sharp and match fit. So hopefully we can take that into the game tomorrow night. Feels good. It was just a light session. It was good to be out there kicking the ball around. <laughs> it's when I walk out, you know, even in the change room before the game, I'm pretty calm. It's when we walk out and that FIFA anthem starts as you as you walk out. That's when I start to feel the excitement. Ten. Anyway, so I'm up at six in the morning, I got the shower on, and I'm like, hang on. Went back and looked at this, and I'm like, six o'clock. A little bit nervous this morning, but she's looking forward to the game. It'll be really good for him to have a win coming off a loss from North Korea against, uh, you know, for the Olympic qualifier. But so it would be good for him to win this game. We've seen a bit of Ghana, but we haven't seen them in the same depth as we've seen most other teams. We don't just make life easy for the for them. That level of concentration has to be 100% for 90 minutes. 100% for 100% of the game. There can be no shortcuts. Tom Samani looking on from the stands, all wide up for sound, with his assistant Robbie Hooker at ground level. Excellent ball played in behind the defence. On the break is Sarah Walsh. Here's an opportunity for Australia. Shot wide. Walsh is too far away. Walsh needs to get closer. On the break once more, Walsh. A bit of handful in the first half. Oh, give us a break. Third corridor down the right. Australia have the numbers. That's a lovely ball slid into Sarah Walsh. Wonderful save by Suleimana. Early ball played in. The touch on for Sarah Walsh. Can she break her duck? She can! It's a goal for Australia. And Sarah Walsh has scored her 24th international goal. It's 1 0 to the Matildas at half time. Okay, we'll see how they are. But yeah, Lisa, Lisa, get warmed up. We got to make sure we refuel and we get ready to go for 45. It, it's a tough game out there. If we get one more goal, though, if we get another goal, we'll finish them off. And, and we're bringing Lisa on in the second half. When we played that first 20 minutes, we fucking slaughtered them. So let's get back. Hey, let's get back to playing. Cuts up on Joe Peters, a dangerous challenge there. Oh. 
Great opportunity for Australia. Sarah Walsh got it, one squares it well. Lisa to matter end. It's 2-0. And Australia have the cushion they're looking for. Lisa Devanna has claimed her 14th international goal. It's Australia 2, Ghana nil. A cramp or something worse there for Joe Peters. Let's hope it's nothing more serious for the star midfielder for Australia. McCullum with an excellent first touch. Lovely change of direction too. Dialogic. Good centre. In for Heather Garriock. And the header's on target. It's 3-0 to the Matildas. Garriock scores a sweet goal. Here's a great chance for Bayor. And Ghana have a reply. A wonderful finish. Tell them they start keeping the ball. Possession given up. And Devana is in. Here's an opportunity, a vacant goal. And it's 4-1. Lisa Devana has scored twice in the second half since coming off the bench in what's been a brilliant virtuoso display. A long-range bullet fired in Barbieri, what a save. Cheryl Salisbury in, and that is a crew challenge. And the Australian captain could see red here. He's very fortunate just to receive yellow. And the full-time whistle has been blown. It's a comprehensive victory to the Matildas. The 4-1 victory over Ghana, their first ever in 10 attempts at a World Cup. It was an historic occasion for Australia's national women's team at the World Cup last night, scoring a big win over Ghana. Experience kind of told me that my knee, yeah, I'd, I'd done enough and I knew that the next girl would come on and, and do a good a job, if not better, than what I could have um, continued to contribute. So most likely that, I won't, that I'll miss the Norway game and be back for the, the Canadian game. I just got a knock on my foot in the game yesterday. I was sore for the majority of the game and then just took my boot off and got a bit of a shock after. Just completely black. I got it x-rayed this morning. Just yeah. got crunched across here and now the bruising's kind of spreading. But um, he reckons I'm pretty, pretty lucky girl today that it wasn't broken or anything. So now I just got to ice it every hour and elevate it. So no training and no game against Norway. Yeah. Poor Sal, I just really felt for her because, yeah, she, this is obviously her first World Cup and um, but I know that she'll be, she'll play again and she'll play a big part in this tournament. She's a tough kid. I was certainly pleased with the outcome after last night. I mean, I think all the news stories back home are about, you know, us finally getting a win after 10 games, you know, longest serving record of never having won a game at a World Cup. So it's, it's good to finally have that um, over and done with. Even though a lot of these girls sort of didn't realise, you know, how much was really attached to that game in winning it because they haven't been part of it all. I think I'm the only one that's uh, <laughs> been part of every one of those losses and draws that we've had. It's probably much more significant to Cheryl, who's been there in, you know, four World Cups ago and, and has been waiting to get this win than it was for, say, you know, Sally or Claire or, or the younger players who it's the first World Cup and they're just excited to be here. The first goal was a very, it was emotional. I, I was for the first time I've ever run up to the halfway line and kind of um, celebrated with the strikers. So we're making six changes to the starting lineup, um, and a, just a slightly different formation. So um, hopefully we'll get into the game a lot fresher than Norway. Sally's toe is a lot better, um, so she'll probably come on the bench tonight. And uh, I think we probably dodged a bullet there. Thought we thought it was broken. And um, Joy Joy Peters has still got a bit of inflammation in her knee, so she's actually training at the moment. 
Okay, Won't be under consideration for tonight. Uh, I think uh, they played very well. I think China and Australia will meet in the f final. You know, you know, last in Shanghai. The key thing for us at the moment is that we look a dangerous team. We look like a team that can create chances, that can score goals. We, we're a team at the moment that's where the players, in essence, are making good choices when they've got options. And that sort of bodes well for the, the next games. I call it soccer. I'm from Mascot, grew up on rugby league, following South Sydney. So footy to me is the other footy. So um, to be following soccer, especially the girls, I like to watch the girls play soccer because they play, you know, they don't roll around holding their legs injured like the men, and that's really hard for people who watch rugby league to then come and watch men carry on like sissies. So that's probably why I like the girls soccer. I think tonight's game uh, for Australia could be very, very interesting because Australia are effectively putting out a weak inside and they think it's not a really winnable game, especially with two key players injured. Joey Peters is a, a real miss for the, uh, the Matildas. This could be a big win for Norway tonight. We cannot afford to be static at this level, OK? You need to have your level of concentration for 90 minutes. That's what makes a difference. OK? And finally, you know, we talked... Well, there's two things. First of all, we talked about not being one-game wonders. OK? Everybody ready? And the final thing is it's Bab's 50th cap today. So. for the Matildas. A wonderful Maisie run. One touch out of the feet and fired across Barbieri's goal. Tom Samani's worst fears have just been realised. <laughs> Joe Burgess makes a good run. And momentarily, the Norwegian defence caught napping. Joe Burgess almost lobbed Benton Orbe there. You just sense the momentum has swung a little bit. The pendulum towards the Matildas. And the Gary Ock on the angle. What a shot. Testing Norbe at a near post. And there it is, half time. The whistle has blown, and for Australia, perhaps relief, because Norway started at a rate of knots. Have the confidence to play. Confidence to play, and if it breaks down, back in quickly, play again. We are so this far off being right back in the game. We've given an early goal away, and then since then, it's been nip and tuck. So we've got a chance now to get a second win, but let's get out there and let's start matching them and having a belief in our play. If we can do that, then we're right in this game. Here she is through the middle. Great opportunity, defensive lapse. Lisa Devala, can she equalise? No, she can't. And Salisbury wins another telling header. Here's Munoz through the middle. Lovely ball slipped in, in the path of Devala, going one way, then the other. Lisa Devala, what a finish! Australia equalised! Devana's got her third World Cup goal. And after dominating in the second half against Ghana, she stamps the mark against Norway here. If 
finishes 1-1 and Australia is still alive in the World Cup Finals. I think we could have probably got a couple more to be honest and we look dangerous so really happy. Except for the eye. My modelling career is now over. Yeah. I'm a bit tired. Yeah. It is hard. Yeah. Tough game. It was tough as emotional, it was roller coaster like. And what's really significant is that you know Norway are number three in the world. And I think we showed tonight how how close we are to that kind of level because I think we more than held our own. Yeah, it's good though, it's good feeling, it's what it's all about. Nothing beats this feeling. But hey, it, it draws better than a loss and again, you know. Lisa and uh, Sarah came on after the other girls had worn them out up front and just terrorised them. I don't think anyone can control those two up front. Tommy's a tactical genius. So, um, and uh, to bring those three strikers on, Caitlin, Sarah, and, um, and of course, Lisa, the mighty midgets, um, yeah, it was a great masterstroke. It doesn't sound right, they just cut it out. Yeah, Thomas? I promise you. Don't make me sound stupid. How do you feel? I'm a bit shaked up a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit, you know, scoring a goal has got me against the top team, has got me really shaken up a little bit, and I'm still shaking. Don't know what's just happened, it's just the biggest adrenaline rush. World Cup in China, Australia needs just a draw in its final group game against Canada to clinch a place in the quarterfinals. Halftime substitute Lisa Devanna scored her third goal in two matches to secure a draw against Norway last night. I don't realise how fast I am to actually see it on camera. Like, when I was watching it, I was thinking, oh shit, I must be pretty quick. Because I usually panic when I'm. Um, past everybody because to me I can hear them breathing from behind and I'm thinking oh they're, they're just they're right behind me but when you watch the footage and everyone tells me they're just gone they're not nowhere near you. so I have to slow down that composure towards the end but yeah you know, I don't change the style I haven't done anything to run quick I'm just blessed to run quicker <laughs> and that's about it yeah. in history of the team that, that Lisa's always enjoyed um, coming on at half time or coming on later in the game. She's now sort of beginning to mature as a, as a player and would be able to start the game and probably be able to complete a game or at least 60 or 70 minutes. It's just at the moment with the personnel we've got, she makes a really effective uh, substitute coming on in the game when teams are a little bit tired and, and her pace is really a, a great weapon for us. <laughs> Girls are my, are my blood, my green and gold army. We're a good knit of girls. I just love them. They're all my sisters. You know, it's amazing how we can coordinate a shopping trip. <laughs> it's sick. How much? Why do you do that? been able to give it a good, what is it, six days rest since the first game, so it's feeling really good. I can't expect it to be any better and I just feel really strong. I've gone in really hard in the last few training sessions, so I think it'll, it'll hold up well for the full 90. I haven't played a full game for a while.
I don't want us just to go out to qualify for the quarterfinals. I want us to go out to win the group, OK? So good luck. Make the most of it. And let's see if we can get the result. Okay. A draw or a win would see the Australians go through. An early chance here for Canada, and it's 1-0. Would you believe it? Melissa Tancredi has scored. And the Australians stunned inside a couple of minutes at Chengdu. Sarah Walsh through, and she takes the shot, and it's deflected onto the upright. Just a fingertip deflection, and it's done enough. From the corner, Colin McCullum. Oh, and she goes ever so close. I'm going to bring this on. You ready? I don't know what you feel out there. There isn't that much. This we've just got to keep playing. A goal will come. A goal will come here. Over the free kick, will it be McCullum or will it be Salisbury? More likely McCullum. Call it McCullum. A oh, wonderful strike. What a brilliant goal. It had the swerve. It had the weight. And Australia have equalised in Chengdu. That's worth a jig or two. Defensive concentration required by Australia. It's a header, it's on target, and it's 2 1. Only seconds remaining. Crunch time here for the Australians. Colette McCullum delivers a long ball in. Here's Lisa Devana. One way, then the other, bamboozling the defence. Cuts back inside, Cheryl Salisbury, it's took a deflection, it's in! She's equalised, it's 2-2! And Cheryl Salisbury has scored her most important goal in the green and gold. The Matildas have qualified for the quarterfinals of first ever in Australian football history. Great for the players. I just feel great for them and the effort they put in. They've done well, they've got what they deserve over the 90 minutes and they deserve this, that's great. <laughs> My stepmother, the first time I've watched a match all the way through. Hey, that's what you want. <laughs> You're hurting them, are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's some people who have been uh, saying that they're watching the games that have never watched football before, so it's fantastic. So that's what we want. We want more people playing it and watching the games. So. tough things that we've had to endure over the past, you know, couple of years or, you know, for myself over the past you know, 15 years I've been with the national team, you know, trying to fit work in and, you know, support ourselves and playing and, you know, all the setbacks that you do have, all that gets wiped clear on a, on a night like last night, even today, you know, who cares, we're through to the quarterfinals. Uh, I just, I can't believe this, seriously. The chances of us, us Australians, to score in the last minute. I don't know, we've, it's amazing. I'm so happy for her, I'm so happy for the team. It's just, you know, being part of another history thing is just so exciting. You know, I'm looking forward to playing Brazil, I think the team is, and I think, you know, it's, we're pretty confident, you know. Winning two, two games against the top two teams, you know, we're not scared of anyone now. 
I mean, this is important. It's, it's not just a, a great way for me to, to see out a major tournament. You know, this will be my last World Cup, so obviously that's awesome. But I think for women's football in Australia, you know, we've achieved a mammoth thing and, you know, the game's just going to keep growing and growing. <laughs> So to actually get to the quarters, I think it would have been a big downer for everybody. You know, to get everything in the high and everything on a roll, to suddenly miss out in the last minute, um, and the ups and downs that we've had over, particularly this year with the Olympic thing and all the rest of it. I just think it's great for those players and, and really brought back a, a huge amount of belief um, individually and as a team. That was that was a fairy tale game. I, I loved it, loved every minute of it. And um, I just, I'm not satisfied with that though. I just really want to win this next game. Oh, we're definitely the underdog. The, you know, Brazilians have um, been uh, the best team in this tournament so far. But I don't think they're unbeatable. And, I, and again, I think they'll, and I might be wrong here, but I think they'll feel that, that we are probably not the team that we actually are. You know, I think. We've, we've been a little bit underrated in this tournament, as we anticipated, and I, th I think that feeling is still out there. Originally, what we thought we'd do coming into this World Cup is obviously get out of our group stage, and then we all knew that anything could happen, happen from here on in, and if it's our day tomorrow night, then we can definitely be beating this Brazilian team. Everyone's got that same passion for the game and the same kind of, I don't know, it's that soccer chick kind of way about, way about you that, um, you just bond really well and it's, I mean, it is a challenging lifestyle, but um, it's, I like a challenge. I'm an emotional wreck all the time. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm always up and down, I'm never consistent. <clears throat> uh, I guess, like, I, I really doubted myself. Like, I'm a, I'm a, everything I do, I have to do with confidence. If confidence I don't, wise. yeah, I'm confident in everything. If I feel confident and I know I can do it, nothing can stop me. So that's just sort of building up now. For strikers, it's definitely pressure, especially for well, any person that's coming off the bench. You, you're expected to do something mm -hmm. and, yeah, make an impact. And if you don't do that, you know, it, it just makes you feel crap because the world's pretty much watching you and you've been told, you know, you, when you come on, you, you can do this, you can do that. And when it doesn't pull off for you, you know, you feel worse and you really know what the people are thinking, you know, or, you know. And you already know that, but you don't need people to tell you that, and it just makes your self-esteem going down. Why don't you believe me? It's another night of history in the making. Welcome again to the FIFA Women's World Cup, live and exclusive on SBS. Tonight we bring you Australia against Brazil from Tianjin, China, and up for grabs, a spot in the semi-finals. I'm more relaxed about tonight than I was in the last couple of games. Um, I don't know why, because I feel it's just a, a fact it's the most important game now. But I just think um, for the players getting over that hurdle to get to the quarterfinals, easy is a lot of the pressure. Push the nerves away. Um, I think people have this, like, Brazil thing at times. They're just another team, all right? They're, they're eighth in the world. They, we're not playing against an absolutely... We're not playing against the men's Brazilian team, all right?
And the match is underway, the first time an Australian team has made a quarter-final. A long-range effort and a superb strike! Formiga has scored. Over the outstretched hands of Melissa Barbieri. The Australian captain Cheryl Salisbury has gone down with cramp. Tom Samani did say before the match it was uh, Cheryl Salisbury's ability to manage the 90 minutes was a major concern for him. see how stretched they're becoming now composure needed turnover here for the Brazilians and there's a challenge on the edge of the area was there contact outside the area or is it a penalty it's a spot kick for Brazil Marta from the penalty spot makes it 2-0 the world player of the year scores and it's going horribly wrong for the Matildas in the first half. Certainly not aided by the injury to Cheryl Salisbury. It's Lisa Devana 101. It should be a goal for Australia. It is a huge mistake in the back by Brazil. And the Matildas are right in this. Devana has scored her fourth World Cup goal. It's Brazil 2, Australia 1. There it is, the half-time whistle has been blown. Joe Peters in with a dangerous two-footed challenge. It's an excellent ball in, and it's 2-2! Australia has scored, and would you believe it? Lauren Colesville, swatting to the box, has scored her first World Cup goal. And the Australians have equalised in spectacular fashion in the second half. What a brilliant header. Cristiani! What a brilliant goal in such a high-quality quarter-final match. So 3-2 to the Brazilians with 15 minutes remaining. But never say die Matildas, I'm sure, will keep on fighting on as they've done throughout the whole tournament. Australia, but it's all over. The Matildas, Australia's first team into a quarter-finals of a global event, but their stunning run has come to an end.